Oh boy, it's <laughs> web show time! <laughs> Yay! <coughs> we got this, we got yeah. this! There's, uh... Well, it was web show time a little while ago, but... Not a ton of news, but there is some news. Oh, there is definitely some news. Did I miss something? Uh, or well... Or are you enthusiastic? I am, like, all upset about right to repair crap right now. Oh, yes, okay. So yeah. there was, there... Okay, here, what, 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 what There's, have we got here? Uh, Apple iOS 11.3 updated and left some repaired iPhones, I believe specifically third-party repaired iPhones, with n <laughs> with no touch functionality. When I first read this, I thought it meant like it, it wouldn't fingerprint like, you. Oh, okay. Like, no, the screen no, doesn't no. Work. no, no, much worse than that. We're talking iPhones that worked and were bricked by software. Yeah. Uh, California is the latest state to explore net neutrality protection after the FCC repeal. And Google Chat is set to rival iMessage and displace SMS. Okay. That I really want to talk about too because you know Allo? Yeah. Yeah, that whole team was like disbanded now and moved over to this. Okay. Google yeah, just yeah. straight up cannot make their make up their mind. Uh okay oh this I plan to talk about for a fair bit. So Oppo Oppo Digital, to be clear, Oppo Digital, not Oppo, is ceasing development of new products. And if you guys are thinking, what? Aren't they like a gigantic phone manufacturer? Oppo Digital is not. Yeah. And this is important for a number of reasons. So we're going to get into that after the intro, which will work. Maybe? Yeah. Oh, oh, some people don't like your don't like your color. My color? They're like it looks like an Instagram filter. Oh. Oops. Oh, oh, we have sponsors. Boop. That's me. Boop, 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 boop. What do you think? <sighs> okay, so here's the problem. It's hard to tell because this is a gaming monitor. Uh, and whoever's uh, watching uh, might be on, I don't know. Something else. Something else. But I, I can tell you guys that looking at it on my blade anyway, um, I, I, I kind of look like that in person. Maybe it's a little rich. <laughs> Maybe it's a little rich. It's not that far off though. Like our shirts are actually, you know what? It's it's not far off. Yeah. Um, I mean, part of why we look weird might be that we are really popping out as colorful against sort of a more we also have, like, neutral set. Will this work? Uh, I guess that? that would do that either way, but there's a light like like, I can almost touch it if yeah. I do that, and there's one on that side, And, and I would almost be able to touch this one if my arms were long, because I wasn't a small human. Yeah, um, so like, it's it's a very different setup than normal. Ah, <sighs> oh, I haven't even seen you this week. No, I've barely like, not seen even myself once. this week. Like, what is going on? I've barely slept this week. I went to bed at 5 in the morning last night. <laughs> I skipped my stream on Wednesday. I'm skipping my stream tonight. This has been a rough... Rough week. We'll make it though. Next week is looking good. Yeah. <laughs> if I get if I get everything done this weekend, next week is looking good. Okay, yeah. sweet. So this is all float plane stuff you're talking yeah. about, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I had what I thought were some really good updates for you, and then I think I ended up crapping on you. You did towards the second that half was, of this week. That was week great. As well. That was a good little bump partway through the week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so you know it's. Okay, there is a lot going well. Just we're not explaining any of this stuff. Yeah, I can't really talk yeah. about most of it, which isn't very helpful. Yeah, but, which is um, unfortunate. We're we're still progressing. Uh, things are going well. The, yeah. There's the PayPal option on the new site should be ready fairly soon. There's been a lot of minor fixes that have come out. There was one that a lot of people were complaining about, which took us a little while to kind of figure out. But the yeah. resolution selection was not showing up for a whole for bunch people of people with ad block. Yeah. It shouldn't matter. There's no ads on Floatplane. It shouldn't matter. But for some reason, yeah. that was a thing. So uh, we ended up fixing that, which was which was yeah. nice. Okay. That, well, that's I don't think that's to be clear. That wasn't recent. something we were doing intentionally. No, it was just it was something to do with the element that is our resolution control thing looked like a third party thing being loaded or something like that. And yeah, something. so that, that's now been fixed. So that's good. 
Yeah. So, so and, and there's been other like there's been a lot of improvement things. My like personal week like doing the stuff that I do was just rough. The platform is doing great. Just my like stuff was has been difficult. And when PayPal rolls around, by by the time by this time next week, by WAN show next week, I think we'll have a new creator to announce. Yeah. Um, and maybe two, depending on whether one of them who I'm just gonna say it, who is a little bit lazy. One of them who's a little bit lazy, depending on whether that one gets back to me with some paperwork. Uh, whatever, I, 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 w- I would tell that person to their face. Yeah, are you asking? Yeah, dog. He, <laughs> <laughs> he knows what's up. <laughs> hey, 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 look, look. I wouldn't say... Everyone's gonna know. I wouldn't say anything about anyone on WAN show oh. that I wouldn't say to their face because I know that watching WAN show if they weren't too lazy is pretty straightforward. Oh, uh, he's I, not I, lazy. I, I don't think anyone's got... Uh, he's probably uh, just got lots of other important things as well. Look, I've, I've heard it from this person's manager. <laughs> I've heard it from this person directly. And I have made... I have made my own observations about. Cause, okay, cause I like this person very much. Me too. I will very, not say disparaging things. Very, it's not disparaging. <laughs> disparaging has to be untrue. Okay. Okay. Very okay. talented okay. creator could probably be much bigger if the sleeves got rolled up a little more often. Wow. I, d- wow. <laughs> That's a compliment. That's a compliment. Kind of. <laughs> it's a backhanded compliment. It's a it's a pat on the back with a spiked glove. It's a subset of compliments. <laughs> Can we agree on that? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh my goodness. Um well, then. All right. Uh, we've got a lot of <laughs> great topics for you guys today. I want to hide behind the intro screen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, 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 I'm co- I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I got this. Oh man. Um, okay. Why don't Why don't we jump right into one of our bigger topics of the yes. week? So yeah. um, this w- the original article here is from motherboard.vice.com. Uh, By the way, let's go ahead and pop this up here. Sharing in the chat and bringing up on screen and talking about stuff is difficult when you're gone. Thank you for coming back. I, oh yeah. Oh, you're very welcome. Uh, I was <laughs> it's a in, lot of stuff to do. <laughs> I was in China last week. Um, that was a lot of fun. We had a lot of people ask us uh, if we were planning a collab with Strange Parts, and no, we weren't planning a collab. Oh god, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, oh, you know what? I guess I guess I better just. Well, uh, <laughs> no, sorry, that, that one was an accident. The, the, the cable management on my mouse is a little tight here. I was so excited, and you made me so sad for such a short period of time. Okay. We were not planning a collab, but actually, I had one of the best in-flight experiences I have ever had on my way to China. So I did a daytime flight for a change instead okay. of a red eye, so yeah. I was awake for the plane ride. Yeah. And my Wi-Fi was banging. <laughs> I was getting one megabyte per second downloads for like long stretches of what Holy was a cow. nine or 10 hour flight or whatever it was. Wow. Yeah, dog, it was nice. To China from here? Yes, sir. Wow. And they did warn me that there would be some some kind of sketchy spots yeah. over Russia and over China itself. <laughs> but they actually were very short and speeds were just slower, not bad. Okay. Yeah, so I was really impressed. And so I got a lot of work done. I actually got something like 200 emails done while I was on that flight, including several to Scotty. Cool. So we actually synced up while I was on my way over there and we ended up working out a plan for getting together. And what we ended up doing was exploring the uh, sort of the electronics market in Shenzhen. Yeah, because I saw your tweet saying you were doing that with them. So when you said you you didn't do a thing, I was really confused. I'm really excited for this. We we did get together. It's called uh, Hua Kong Bay, Hua Kong Bay. Whatever, okay. My Chinese is not great. I made him say it in the video. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was just like, no, his, is, no. his seems to be quite good. Um, it's okay. It's, my, my favorite thing is when he says something, and I'm like, wow, I'm impressed. And then the person, like, does a little, like, shuffle back slightly and then responds in English. And I'm like, come on. He <laughs> tried so hard. That sounded so good. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah, so, um, so we got together. And we started out just kind of, like, poking around. But what I realized was that place is so vast and there is so much stuff in it 
that it is like it's overwhelming. Yeah. Like it's completely overwhelming. Like it, if you want laser pointers that can burn stuff, you can find that. If you want what are apparently really cool microscopes, I'm not much of a microscope nerd, but what are apparently like super cool microscopes, you can you can get that stuff. Uh, I, I know Lou from Unbox Therapy ended up like going on a shopping spree ultimately, but I'm not much of a shopper. I actually buy very little stuff. Other than like, yeah, you too. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were. I thought you were gesturing no, something. Okay. Yeah. Just, but, like yeah. we're both kind of cheap. cheap. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I, I'm not the kind of person who just like walks into a mall and is like, oh wow, I need to buy all the things. My mom bought me this shirt. Thank you, mom. So what I realized is I needed an objective. Okay. So what I found out was that his editor is actually based in Mexico. Okay. Sure. Um, and is running like a very, very, like, very run of the mill and not current gen editing system. So I was like, how about this? Let's see if we can build a system here, a video editing system, for cheaper than if we just ordered it off Newegg.com. Okay. So certain parts, like graphics cards, for example, mining, by the way, huge in. Huashong Bay, I know I said it wrong, I'm sorry, but whatever. Huge that huge in China in general. So if we had wanted mining stuff, then there's lots of selection. But mining pricing and then the effect that mining has on pricing of components like GPUs is pretty much sort of what it is. It's like it's like people who travel expecting to get a deal on a gold bracelet. Yeah. It's like Gold's a commodity. <laughs> it costs what it costs. And you can pay in whatever sort of rupees or shekels or or dong or whatever. You can pay in whatever currency you want. You're still ultimately paying what you're paying. Um, so certain components like graphics cards, there were not deals to be found. Yeah, but, but then there are, there are other things. Like I found this like 1600 watt power supply that was like 80 bucks. Oh, wow. I didn't buy that one because I picked it up and I was like, oh, wow. That's, that's far too light for what you're saying. It there does. is nothing in there. Um, <laughs> but, but, but like cases. You okay, would yeah. think, given that they're probably manufactured up the road, that cases would be pretty cheap. Um, so it turns out cases are actually... Well, okay. The case is a cool part of the video. Okay. You're going to enjoy that. Right. So anyway, I was like, okay, let's build an editing workstation for his editor. And then halfway through, he's like... You know what? Screw my editor. I'm going to give the system away to my viewers. <laughs> so cool. what, I think what's actually going to happen is he's got a video of kind of his side of this whole interaction. And he filmed so stealthily. I even asked him at the end. I was like, D -d 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 did you film anything? He's like, oh, yeah. I filmed like most of it. I'm like, <laughs> wow. Because you know how he's always doing that stuff where he like, puts his camera on the counter yeah. and he's got the yeah. – like, that guy is stealthy for a like <laughs> tall white dude in China. <laughs> um, so so he's got his side, and we've got our side, and then he's going to be doing a giveaway of the system that we built to one of his viewers. Because I don't know, I don't know if people know this in general, but he's trying to go full time YouTuber. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, like that has been his intent. Oh, okay. So what looked like just sort of a weird side project was actually just a pretty focused, pretty smart dude making some super explosive videos to get his channel kickstarted. Okay, yeah. Yeah. If you guys don't somehow know who we're talking about, uh, it's Scotty from Strange Parts. You can check out the Strange Parts YouTube channel. Yeah, so he's uh, more likely to be recognized as the guy who built his own iPhone out of parts or the guy who in added Shenzhen. a iPhone jack or a headphone jack yeah. to an iPhone. All right, people are going to be like, people are going to be flipping their crap. Okay, one spoiler: we end up with a Ryzen system. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah. All right, so uh, let's go back to what I was planning to talk about, which is the new iOS update. That right, right. This this is what got me talking about him because his whole thing is like hacking phones apparently so anyway yeah. new ios ios update killed touch functionality on iphone 8 motherboard.vice.com you guys got to be careful because that looks like iphone 8s that does that does quite directly look like iphone 8s i know it is technically not grammatically correct but if you throw an apostrophe in there people will know sort of 
inherently that you mean iPhone 8. Oh, it's a common. That's hack. not what they mean. Wow. Yeah. There is no iPhone 8s. Yeah, I know. So yeah, if you if you put the apostrophe in there, like little pro tip, it's cr incorrect, but people will know what you mean. At least, yeah. yeah. Or you could do iPhone 8 phones or something like that. But I don't know if that's good for uh, SEO. But then they don't have that up in the URL anymore. 8s is weird. Anymore. 8s yeah. is weird. 8s is sort of a bad idea. Anyway. So what went down here was um, Apple rolled out iOS 11.3, and if you've if you've ever sort of looked into right to repair and Apple's reputation around this whole movement, this probably won't surprise you that much because they've been known to do things like um, not provide third-party repair shops with the with the tools that they need in order to retain Touch ID functionality on iPhones with replaced home buttons. And this was far more of an issue with a phone like the iPhone 6S, which had a hardware touch button, or uh, excuse me, a hardware home button that was not solid state. So they switched to the solid state button with the 7, which is much harder to break, whereas those those clicky buttons no, that was a pretty common piece to end up damaged on the iPhone leading up to that time. So, so what would happen was people would take it into a third-party repair shop and they would have a perfectly authentic button and a perfectly authentic phone yeah. and they would put them together, but without Apple's special sauce, they wouldn't be able to make it work even though that has nothing to do with the secure enclave that actually holds the fingerprint information. This was just Apple being restrictive because they can be restrictive. Um, so anyway, the issue affected phones that had their screens replaced with aftermarket displays, i.e. not repaired by an Apple authorized facility. And it is believed to be because of an incompatibility between a small chip that controls the screen and the aftermarket displays. Um, so it's possible this is an accident. It is possible that it is something Apple did on purpose, but either way... Uh, John is saying that our apostrophe thing, thing is not incorrect. It's an exception, and you can put it after a number if it's a single digit. Oh! Well, thank you, John Martin. Appreciate that. Okay, so my confusion there, though, would be if it was an iPhone X. Yeah, you would say iPhone tens. Yeah, but in text. Yeah, but you would say, so, oh, X. Because he said single digit. Oh, right, it's an X. Yeah. yeah. That's still not a digit. Yeah. So in this case, yeah, our little thing works for yes. it. Grammatically correct, hooray. But the 10's gonna wreck everything. Yeah, go Apple. <laughs> um, so I guess this whole, this whole um, breaching the topic of broaching? Breaching? Broaching, whatever. Uh, on the topic of right to repair, um, yes. I will have a response. I don't know if you've been following this drama, but we did a video on how our iMac Pro is yeah. still broken. Um, and wow, pretty much everyone and their dog has made a response. Uh, one of the news articles about it on an Apple sort of centric news site has a thousand comments on it. Yeah. Wow. Like this went, this went viral and sort what of a very- What is the general? Sentiment. The general consensus depends on who you ask. If people are more of like, if they're more in sort of the techie uh, PC DIY crowd, they're like, wow, this is ridiculous. Yeah. If they're in the, um, not that crowd? Cupertino crowd. Ah. Let's, let's call it that. If they're in the Cupertino crowd, then it's my fault for not reading the terms and conditions that stipulate that Apple doesn't have to repair something that has been modified by a third party. Okay. So, okay. I, I actually have a lot of notes made for this video already. We'll be addressing the vast majority of the comments that people have made. That's uh, exciting, we don't do that that often. Articles that have been written. Well, the, the, uh, actually we wouldn't be doing it, except that we still need to fix the freaking iMac Pro. So that's in progress. We are working on a solution that will allow us to get parts and fix it. Okay. Uh, it's gonna be a weird solution and we're gonna be talking about the hoops that we've had to jump through in order to get there. Some of the hoops that were available that we chose not to jump through, whether because they were too expensive or too sketchy or whatever else the case may be. But this, this saga is far from over. Cool. There okay. is one thing that I absolutely want to address now 
And tell you what, I haven't screenshotted anything yet. So if you're one of the tool sheds out there who posted that this was the reason that they denied the repair, you can go back and edit your comment and you won't end up in the video, okay? A shocking number of people said that even though Apple never said this, and it's nowhere in the screenshots, and it's nowhere in the policy, and it's certainly not in the video, a number of people have concluded that Apple didn't repair it because the cost of the parts, I mean, you guys totaled this thing. The cost of the parts is so high that it's more than just buying a new machine anyway. So you should just buy a new machine. What are you, stupid? Okay. Even if all of the parts that we listed in the video, the display, the main board, and the power supply, even if they're all dead, which they may very well not be, you can actually have a component short out and be protected by the onboard circuitry that does exist in some cases. If you get lucky, you can actually have sparks fly off a board and have it live for years. Even if all of the components that we think could possibly be dead are in fact dead, that is a five thousand dollar machine you got to be drinking some pretty freaking amazing kool-aid to think that a monitor a motherboard and a power supply are worth five thousand dollars that's at least a three thousand dollar power supply three thousand dollar power supply is that what you get, 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 get off my show i don't even know who you're get talking. off my show you don't even work here <laughs> that's, uh, that's fair <laughs> the cpu alone is like five seven hundred dollars yeah the 32 gigs of ddr4 ecc ram yeah that has a value that's expensive the chassis remember this is an apple chassis it's a special chassis that costs money the ssd the dual ssds those are still good so people running in going well i mean you broke this stuff total write-off total write-off that, that's why they wouldn't replace it. The cost was too high. And I had one, I had one guy being like, that's like, you know, it's gonna be $300 of labor, plus the cost of these parts is more than the cost of the system. What are you, drunk? Oh man, like the amount of, like the amount of worship that goes on here just boggles my mind. It baffles me. Anyway, there will be a video. I promise it will be epic. And I don't know if I'm ready to promise this yet, but we are definitely working on flying Mr. Lewis Rossman out here oh, to help me put this thing cool. back together. Okay? That would be awesome. So I have nothing else to say about it until the video comes out, but it's gonna be fun. We're gonna have some fun. We're gonna That'd we're gonna be really cool. You know, I don't drink, but we'll 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 figuratively pop some brewskis and fix an iMac Pro and talk about how that's going and cool. it's, gonna, it's gonna be a good thing. It's gonna nice. be a good thing. I'll drink them for you. Uh, yeah, Ter uh, Terran would be happy <laughs> to drink brewskis for me. Oh my god. That, that, that Have you already bullet, started, Terran? That, that bullet is what he... <laughs> it's all good. All right. Um, <laughs> speaking of drinking... Hey, by the way, what time do we start tomorrow? 10 o'clock. Okay. I told you. I'm just making sure. Yeah. Yeah. I ordered food for you because he didn't order. I saw, I've been very busy. <laughs> Thank you. Speaking of drinking, we actually have a deeper relationship that we're forming with Madrina's Coffee over the next little bit. Uh, wait, I don't know. Is this is this out there yet? I don't know if uh, Colton's going to run down and yell at me if I if I say this. I think I'm just going to do it. Should I just do it? I mean, I don't work here anymore. Go ahead. We are we are apparently going to be doing our own blend. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. How is that going to work? Um, there, there's a way. Don't worry. Okay. Yeah. Like it's actually less complicated than you might think. I don't. I know nothing about coffee. So. Anyway. <laughs> As you know. So Madrina's coffee. Coffee for fuel. Big cans of cold brewed coffee with a flavor for pretty much everyone. They got cappuccino, dark roast, cafe mocha. That's actually 2x dark roast. And... They're all inconvenient, ready to drink. Man, it's in ounces. 444 milliliter. Yeah, see, we gotta do the we gotta do the milliliters. And from now until April 27th, you can get half off. Yes, my friends, that is 50% off your Madrina's coffee order with discount code Linus. And the first 50 people to use the code, please like 
Keep the WAN show running in the background though. I know you guys are in a hurry, but come on. The first 50 to use code Linus here are gonna get a free six pack of cold brew in the US. Nice. Or a free bag of their micro roast international. And that'll automatically be added to your order. Just go to madrinascoffee.com slash Linus. And international shipping is now available. It's not cheap to ship internationally, but Madrinas is paying 15% of the shipping cost to help y'all out. If you have any questions about the flavors or how to order, Shlomo from Madrinas is in the Twitch chat. Yes. Uh, FreshBooks. Oh, wait. There you go. There's your Madrinas coffee stuff right there. I'll leave Hooray. that up I'll go talk about FreshBooks. FreshBooks is our other sponsor for the show today. It's the super simple to use invoicing tool that actually does a lot more than just help you create and send slick looking invoices. It helps small business owners and freelancers keep track of their accounting in a way that is actually make, that actually makes sense to normal people. So you don't have to have like an accounting certificate in order to run a small business doing, you know, um, networking for local businesses or computer repair out of your garage or teaching dance lessons out of your garage. One or, of the most helpful things in my opinion too is especially yeah. for someone who doesn't have a lot of time because they're trying to do their actual freaking job. If you have a problem and you need to call them, you talk directly to a person. Yeah, and they will help you with that. They've got apps for iOS and Android so that you can take their timesheet function, um, their expense management functions. You can take all that stuff with you on the go. And they even have a feature to let you see when your client has seen your invoice for the first time to put an end to the guessing games. Uh, so head over to freshbooks.com slash, oh dang it. So head over to freshbooks.com slash WAN and get your 30 day free trial today. Just enter the WAN show in the how did you hear about us section. Leading us finally to, nope, I'm not gonna change it. I'm just gonna leave Freshbooks up there and then we're gonna eat some savage jerky. Okay. And then I'm going to change, I'm gonna leave that savage jerky one on for a bit. I'm, I'm just I'm gonna have a, a time delay. It's like rooting through like a treasure chest. I know, right? <laughs> they sent so much maple buffalo bacon, and I'm so excited. I'm gonna have some, but I'm gonna have some of the sriracha bacon first. They sent lots of uh, bacon. Today. I'm in. I'm in. No, I'm not. No, I'm not sharing that kind though. It's for me. They Please. sent it because they know I like it. They didn't send it because they know you like it, Ed. Maybe if they send even more next time, I will consider. Sharing the maple muff buffalo bacon. I want to put this over there where I can't get it. Yeah, actually, yeah. Hold on, I'm gonna put this over here. We're hiding you know the, what? The I'm gonna put it right next to me. <laughs> okay, so it's not being hidden. It's being put in like a high threat area. That's right. <laughs> you get close, you're gonna get swatted, yo. No, not that. <laughs> We're like, what do you think, man? <laughs> Meant like a. You know, like, like swatted. <laughs> we're just, I don't know. We're on the platform that that is like popular on. <sighs> savage jerky is made with high that quality ingredients savage. without nitrates or preservatives. <laughs> Their goal was to create a snack that's full of flavor and not bad for you. Mm. They've got 13 different flavors of jerky. Some of the favorites are sriracha bacon. This one's actually really good. I don't know if I've tried this one before. This is really good. Um, their maple buffalo bacon, uh, it's traditional, uh, moho, moho flavors are fantastic. Um, aside from jerky, they make barbecue sauce, hot sauce, and a spice rub. Their Carolina Reaper hot sauce uses one of the hottest peppers in the world, the bell. Haha, <laughs> I think I made that joke before, but whatever. It's the Carolina Reaper, duh, it's right in the name. And you can use offer code LTT to save 10% over at savagejerky.com. That one is really good. Dang. Sriracha bacon? Mm-hmm. Can I try it? Yes. <laughs> I've technically only claimed the maple buffalo bacon. Uh-huh. Only one piece. I might claim this in the future, though. Really nice. All right. So the original article here is from ArsTechnica.com, but it would appear as though California is the latest in a number of states that are exploring net neutrality bills to protect net neutrality in spite of what's going on with the federal government. So basically, they're attempting to restore net neutrality provisions that are similar to the ones that were used by the FCC before their recent repeal. However, in addition to prohibiting fast lanes, throttling, blocking, and paid prioritization, they want to go a step further to prohibit zero rating. 
which is when the use of a certain site, such as Netflix, doesn't count against a user's data cap. Now, I have mixed feelings about zero rating. It sounds cool, like at first. Uh, the issue with it, the big, the big issue with it is say, one of these ISPs owns a service, which is really common. Um, they could zero rate their own service so that you subscribe to them instead of someone else. So John's coming. But in the meantime, I want to present my... Um, He's deleted all his notes. I, I want to... I okay. <clears throat> I want to present my sort of dumb consumer who's very selfish sort of point of view and go, well, I can see things about this that I would really like. Because zero rating can be applied in that way, where someone like a Comcast <clears throat> might say that, oh, okay, you know, watching watching shows from uh, Comcast. Who owns Comcast again, or who does Comcast own? Or NBC. NBC. Okay, so you know, NBC streams don't count against your data usage, but there are, are cases of zero rating where they aren't implementing it on their own yeah. services. Like, for example, T-Mobile yeah. allows, I think it's uh, YouTube streaming, doesn't count against your data plan. Well, I mean, Google doesn't own T-Mobile and vice versa. This is just a handshake deal, which, again, on the surface can look really good for consumers because, hey, you can watch all the YouTube you want if but you're a T-Mobile customer. theoretically, that hurts like Twitch and whatever else. But... Or some, you know, young upstart video streaming platform. Hey, hey. Oh, oh. That, that doesn't has get higher the benefit. bit rates, that, and that doesn't have <laughs> oh. a chance to talk to T-Mobile about such an arrangement. So John's yeah. gonna tag in for me and talk in a little bit more detail about. <laughs> oh, that was why you're here, right? right? Yeah, I yeah. Know we got to that part already. Yeah, no, no. Feel free to explain it in better detail than what. Go, go. Okay, it was like the last bullet point, though. Okay, so we're looking at we're looking at the California uh, bill on net neutrality, right? Yeah. So, okay, so um, which wait which bullet point are we on? Because the I last bullet point is here. We we've mm -hmm. we've only gone through a few of them, but we've talked about this kind of thing on the show before. So I think a lot of people kind of know okay. essentially what's going on. Okay, so um, so you talked about zero rating already, right? Yeah. So okay, so um, right now the bill is at um, it got passed by like this little subcommittee or something in their uh, state house. Okay. Um, so it still has to be uh, passed by both chambers, signed into law, and all that, but. Um, both chambers and the governor's mansion are currently controlled by Democrats, who traditionally have been more friendly towards net neutrality, so we'll see what happens with it. Um, right now, ISPs are, unsurprisingly, opposing the bill, and they also might challenge it in court if it does indeed become law. Um, there are a number of legal arguments they could use to try to get this scrapped, and this is interesting not only because California is such a huge state, but since the FCC repeal a few months ago, um, I think they've gone so far they've gone further than, they did, than any other states have in trying to have like a real sort of like comprehensive net neutrality law, right? So. Um, what I put down here was they might argue um, federal preemption or that the bill unduly burdens. What is federal Congress. preemption? So that is when a federal law and a state law come into conflict. Okay. And there's a number of ways that can happen. Obviously, there are very clear cases where the federal law says one thing and the state law says exactly the opposite. So you don't need to be a lawyer to understand that. But there's also cases where it's a little bit more subtle, this being one of them. Okay. So what happened when the FCC uh, repealed um, the net neutrality protections uh, a few months back, uh, they, they specifically said we need to return to light touch regulation of the internet, and this is exactly what we're doing. So is it really actually preempting anything if in line is just going to reach over the desk here and steal some more sriracha bacon jerky? I don't blame him. That stuff is delicious, but... Uh, but it's good. Yeah, it's... Uh, okay, anyway, so... Um, what was I talking about? Federal preemption. He's distracting me with this little like <laughs> bacon grab. Okay, so we, we just right. Yeah. So, okay, so they're trying to. The SEC is saying they're trying to regulate the internet less, give the ISPs a little more leeway. Yeah. But the question here then becomes: Is there? Does that mean the federal government is intending to, um, in law, they call it occupying the field? Does Does the federal government intend to regulate this area so heavily that the states can't do anything about it? But in their own order. They said we're trying to regulate this less heavily and scrap these net neutrality regulations. So right. that that would be a very interesting like battle in court. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So they're saying like we 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 don't want to regulate this as much. 
but they're aggressively not regulating and trying to make sure that no one else can either? Well, I don't know if they're consciously trying to do that, but what I'm saying is like when, when a big like ISP takes the state of California to court <laughs> and says they can't do this, they might try to argue that the federal government has tried to occupy the field somehow. It might not be a great argument, but I expect them to try it. Uh, the okay. other thing they might argue is, which they might be more successful with, is saying the bill unduly burdens interstate commerce, which is which is a um, which is a constitutional argument, but basically, the state's so weird. I know, right? But yeah, so but the idea is that one state can't um, oh. can't meddle in the affairs of how other states want to conduct commerce between them. So, okay. uh, so like if you're if you're importing, like let, let's use a simpler example. Let's say you're importing a bunch of bacon jerky. Let's say the state of North Carolina is importing a bunch of bacon jerky. Um, like from another state or from another country? Let's say from another state. Okay. Um, so there actually that would make sense because I think savage jerky is based out of Georgia so it would be a quick trip but, um, but anyway so let's say they're importing a bunch of bacon jerky and they have regulations on bacon jerky was that bacon jerky Bacon jerky, bacon jerky, bacon jerky. It's like um, how to summon Linus. So anyway, let, so let's say there's regulations that the state of NC has on bacon jerky. Let's say that, that they, they can't have but so many preservatives. They have to be at least you know 95% B for whatever else, right? This is just a, a random made-up example. Yes, it's a hypothetical. This is bacon not actually jerky real. probably shouldn't have very much beef in it. It's Friday. It's been a long week. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, anyway. That'd be so, a good thing to regulate then. So, yeah. so um, let's say they have one set of regulations for bacon jerky produced in state and another set for bacon jerky they're importing from Georgia. Okay. So that would, be, that would be against the Constitution. You can't do okay. that. But if the same rules apply to everybody, it would be okay. okay. This is a little bit more complicated because I could see AT&T, Verizon, Comcast, whoever else walking into court and saying that even though the law, because I actually read the law a little bit, and it applies to any ISP that has customers in California, which makes sense. But um, they could argue something about, oh, the internet is so decentralized and because of that, this isn't like just importing a product or whatever, and this is placing an undue burden on interstate okay. commerce. Whether that would win, I have no idea, but I do expect a lengthy court battle. So, okay. So there you have it. The internet is not like bacon jerky. <laughs> well, thank you, John. And for this that has insight. been the legal corner with John. I guess. <laughs> have a good weekend. Thanks, John. Yep. Man, the states are weird. Yeah. I know it's trippy. I'll never fully understand how all it's that like kind of stuff works. It's like 52 or like maybe but not 52 because there are also like territories or something and There's then 50 states lines. 50, 50 states, but then, like, what is what the... What are the ones that aren't... Yeah, what are the ones that aren't states? Guam, there's, Puerto Rico. Yeah, Guam, Puerto, Puerto Rico. Rico. What are those, just, like, called? But they're, And they're all kind of like little countries, except that they're one country, sort of. Um, <laughs> except when they, like, want to do things that the, the, the ones running the one country don't like, then... Or that they don't like, and then, I don't know. Then they can, like, actually fight about that, whereas yeah. in most other countries it's just like, no... This is how it works. This is how it works. It's yeah. interesting. It's confusing for someone who isn't from there and didn't like grow up in this system. Federalism. I think it's confusing for the people there too. <laughs> yes, it is. It really, really is. I agree. Google Chat. Yeah. The original article here is from Tom's Guide. Wow. So okay, you had a comment that all the the, the Allo team was dissolved and brought over here. Apparently, yes. Um, this is not the first time this has happened. Do you think this no. is the last time? Man, I don't know what to tell you because uh, the article that I was reading about this basically had like a timeline of the whole experience <laughs> of of Google and chat applications going all the way back to I think Google Talk was the first one. So to give people a little bit of background, Google Chat is a newly proposed thing from Google. It is set to rival iMessage and displace SMS, which is probably the exact same lines that we've had with previous chat applications from Google. But they are taking a different approach this time. So they, to be clear, yeah. this is not Google Talk turning into Gchat, turning into, oh man, was it then integrated with, hang, uh, with Google Plus? And then turning into Hangouts, and then Allo, Allo ended and up the other one. In there, was there another one? What was the other one? They I, released like two. I remember last time the most confusing thing was that they released two at basically the same time, and they were only marginally different. Yeah, it I don't, was Allo and like something else. I've had a hard time keeping track of exactly what's been going on, and yet like I just 
I find the whole experience of, of both SMS and chat on Android very frustrating because the feature sets are, are divergent in like little stupid ways. So for example, the messages team, like, you know, just the default vanilla stock Android, I shouldn't say vanilla because that might be an Android at some point, <laughs> vanilla. like the stock Android messages app, um, it's like so back ass words in some ways where like like it doesn't have cloud backup and I i'm kind of sitting here going what get around youtube demonetization saying it that way bass backwards yeah i don't know probably <laughs> um so it's like it's so backwards it doesn't even have cloud backup which just blows me away that that's not completely automatic when i switch from one android phone to another one all my sms messages are gone but that team apparently still exists because it must have, I don't think it was that long ago that they looked at how well a lot of people are busy using Facebook Messenger because SMS is sort of trash by today's standards. Um, and basically the only thing they're using SMS for is verification codes. So when you get your notification for messages, it has mark as red, which is like, awesome. So you never have to touch it again. You don't have to click through it to mark it as red. You don't have to, if you swipe it away, it doesn't stay unread. Awesome. That is pretty great. Hangouts so the- doesn't have that. Gmail doesn't have that. And and pretty much I mean pretty much any app now is just notification spam as far as I can tell. And so the ability to mark a notification as red when it comes in without actually opening the notification. Very nice. If I can the more I can do in the notification tray the better. Cuz yes. if I can just do everything I need to without even opening anything, that's fantastic. So, also, the, the app I was thinking of was Duo, which was their video chat thing. So they, they launched Allo and Duo mm. at pretty much the same time, and they were both for communicating. Yeah. Okay, but this is not, this is not like, a, like a new app that's just another Hangouts or Allo replacement or whatever the case may be. This is more of a back-end upgrade. Yeah. So they're rich calling it... Rich Communication Services. What, what, what is this? Yeah, Rich Communication Services. So unlike SMS, it'll support video, uh, it'll have red receipts, it'll support higher res images, and the mobile networks will have to opt in. But the idea is that, and you know, the, it's a funny thing to me. Why do people even care about iMessage that much? iMessage is great, what are you talking about? What's great about it? I don't know, it's, it just feels nice. It goes quick, you can tell what phone they have, which is cool. I don't know. Every time I've had an iPhone, I liked iMessage. Right, but did it really make a difference to you one way or the other if the bubble was blue or green? I mean, SMS sucks, as you know. Mm -hmm. How much better really is Facebook chat? It's not. It's not. The only reason I use Facebook chat is for So iMessage is great because it's fine. But Yeah, but Facebook chat has a built-in phone book. I don't... That's what's useful about Facebook chat. Eh, I don't have everyone on Facebook. Right, but if you wanted to find someone, that's the point of a phone book, yeah, not, but not an address wanna, book. I don't want to add Facebook to having access to all my stuff, though. You don't have to. You just you just search Facebook for a person, and you're like, oh, right, that person, and you contact them. Oh. Like, that's what I mean by a phone book, not an address book. Okay. Like, you, like a directory. So that's right. the only reason I give any Fs whatsoever about Facebook Who Messenger. Who do you contact that way on Facebook? I don't know, like people that I, like, met at badminton once and like want to play with again sometime, but I didn't exchange phone numbers with them. Wow. But I remember their name. Because it'll come up automatically because they'll be friends with a bunch of other badminton people. Okay. So it'll know, like if I'm searching for Andy, it'll be like, oh yeah, probably this Andy, even though you don't have him in your contacts. I've never used that. Yeah, okay, it's cool. like super useful. Or like if there was someone that you- I don't go outside, so. You ran into at a LAN party or something. It, it might know Live from... parties aren't cool anymore, I know, I know. I wish they were. I would love that. So it might know from their association with other gamers that that's the, you know, Tom Smith that you were most likely to be looking for. So it's just, it's, it's, that's why I use that. That's the only reason I care about that. iMessage, other than Animojis, which is a completely artificial lockdown, thank you, Apple, there's no reason why you couldn't send Animojis as a video clip in Hangouts, for example, other than that they just don't want you to. Um, I, I don't really get it. What's so amazing about it? Maybe people are telling me in Twitch chat what's there's so really, there's really it. There isn't much else, though. Group messages on iMessage and WhatsApp are much better than SMS. Okay, that's fine, but WhatsApp has that. And you can do that on Facebook Messenger. 
Um, iMessage is end-to-end -end encrypted. SMS is open to snooping. iMessage is it, much less creepy okay. than Facebook. So if you care about that, then you can be using a third-party messaging service in general because iMessage is just automatically turned on and turned off depending on who the other, what kind of phone the other person has. So it's like... It's it's like only like sometimes running your VPN when you talk to like some people. So I, I don't really get that either. Why don't you use des Discord? That <laughs> we're talking about privacy stuff. I can text on my computer with it too. Um, okay. Yes. Integration with the desktop experience. That's that cool. is a good one. Um, Facebook Messenger, same thing. WhatsApp, same thing. Uh, Hangout, same thing. People are like, it just works. It kind of does though. Yeah, it kind of does, but like. And I know it's a funny tagline, but it kind of does just sort of work. It just sort of works the way you would expect SMS to, but it doesn't. You okay. know what I mean? So then in a nutshell, chat is like a back-end upgrade to SMS that other messaging apps, this is cool, like Samsung's messaging app, will support. Google actually has a fair number of partners signed, in, signed on for this thing, so... Like, I mean, I guess I'm excited, and that's cool, but I just, um, yeah, I guess that's cool. I don't yeah. know. I just, I don't feel like iMessage needed to be something that had to be competed with, but I apparently do. it does. I do. And I guess maybe what I'm forgetting is that a lot of people, like when I message my mom, she doesn't have WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger even or anything. Like to her, text message is text message. And so if this upgrades the text message experience that normies are probably just using by default because they don't know anything else, then I guess that's good. But even then, we're still not going to have perfect coverage because we're going to be relying on iOS to Android and vice versa to kind of translate to each other. But maybe Apple and Google will find a way to cooperate on that. I'm not sure. I haven't looked into it carefully enough to know if that's... Uh, oh, no, yeah, right, right here in Tom's article, uh, there's no clue as to whether or not Apple will support chat. So... There you go. It's apparently less secure than Apple's own service, so it might be unlikely. See, that's, I, I don't know. It seems pretty secure. It does everything you really need it to do, and it works all the time. And it feels smooth and nice. I don't know. I like iMessage. It was one of the saddest things about leaving an iPhone was I was like, oh, I have to go back to like this weird junk. It's just so weird because like, when Lou did that video at CES where he asked a bunch of creators what phone they're actually using, uh, a couple people, I think, might have, maybe it was just one, I don't know, at least one person brought up iMessage. And like, all my friends are on iMessage. And so I asked off camera, I was like, why does that matter? What does that mean? Yeah. I, like, I, I I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm like, okay. I didn't use it enough to actually know because like, I didn't this, have an iPhone for very is long. Is this just really excellent branding? Because even a, a, a tech content creator, and I'm not going to name who they were, but a tech content creator, tech tuber, didn't know why he cared about iMessage. It's just, my my whole thing was it was very smooth. It's I like the idea of text messages. I like the idea of default apps. I've always liked the idea of default apps. I like default experiences. I like a Pixel because it is stock Android. I would love to use the stock Android SMS thing, but it's Garbo. I still have to use it, kind of, because like my upstairs neighbors, bless their wonderful souls, use old school text messages. Um, and it's kind of jank for that. Um, and there are a few other people in my life that I have to use that for. I use Facebook Messenger for a lot of my stuff, but that sucks. Not only is it like scraping everything, it uses a really odd amount of battery life. It's terrible in a lot of other ways. I've got people saying that it's a status symbol. Yes. Okay, that's not why I like it, but some people do see it that way. If you pop up in the iMessage with the like, I have an iPhone color, it's Blue. like a positive thing. I didn't even remember which one it was. I use it for a very short period of time. I did know that I really liked my iMessage experience. I texted more people when I was on an iPhone because I had iMessage. And I texted less people when I was on an Android because I didn't have iMessage. Because the stock texting thing sucks so bad. I used to have something called GoSMS Pro. Like a long time ago when texting was still really popular. Because the default Android messaging thing was so garbage. Um, that I got Go SMS Pro, but then something happened there. I don't remember what it was, and they were bad. I think I just so I hate stopped. everyone who has these problems because they clearly have social lives, and I don't. 
You well, know what? You're, you're the one you know that what? needs. You're the one that needs the like. You know what? The, F those people. The address book. You know what? No. In in freaking messenger. Well, I didn't say because I used you it meet often. So many people out playing. I didn't say it was so many. People. That you need to look them up. I can prove to you that it's like three ever. Actually. <laughs> Well, I'm at zero, okay? So <laughs> you're winning by a lot. <laughs> Speaking of zero, uh, that's how many new products will be developed by Oppo Ooh. Digital. So this was posted on the forum by uh, someone, Nick the Magin, the Nick the Magin, man, whatever that is. Magin. Very sad day. Oppo, and this is uh, Nick's editorial, uh, Oppo made the best video players on the market with superb build quality and fantastic customer support. Guess the market just wasn't there for the higher end product. I love my UDP 203 and hate to think that my next player will have to be made of cheap plastic from the likes of Sony or Samsung. So for those of you not familiar, Oppo was a brand that I already couldn't understand why they existed back in like 2012, 2011. Um, so this is when I was a product manager back at NCIX and one of my fellow product managers was going to bring in these uh, high-end DVD players and Blu-ray players um, with the argument being that they had sort of fancy upscaling technology and, and stuff. And um, they, were, they were very expensive and I kind of went, are you, are you effing kidding me? Like, like high-end DVD players? That's, that's, kind of like, uh, that's kind of like trying to sell premium cassette tapes as far as I'm concerned, for which I'm sure there's a market. But oh, there totally is <laughs> in the. Um, okay, let me come up with uh, something better. Retro wave. How about like? I think it's called retro wave. How about like stylish dad sandals? Like, okay, I would. You know you. what? Okay. Um. Hmm. Working on this. Okay, so there's a niche for almost anything, but yeah. not for this apparently anymore. Synth wave or new retro wave. They like cassette tapes. Okay. So we've gotten past the point where anyone, or at least enough people to sustain this company, care enough about fancy upscaling features and better build quality on their physical media players. Now, I do still buy Blu-rays periodically because it is, it does look a lot better than streaming. But man, is Blu-ray ever going to get replaced? Like, will there be a successor or are we just done? I think we're done. Huh. I mean, it's at the point now where it's just... People have of kind of voted with their vault. Well, it's they, they want cheaper, they don't want higher quality. And it, it's gotten to the point where I think the cheaper option is so much cheaper that a lot of people don't think it's worth it. So they're still going to be providing support and doing updates, but, I mean... And at the same time, to be fair, like a high-end Blu-ray player... I think is a little bit harder to explain the value of. Like a lot of people are gonna yep. go with like their PlayStation. Yeah. Or whatever else I that sure has would. It built in. Xbox One S. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like PlayStation the, doesn't. Oh. No Blu-ray player in the PS4 Pro. Wrecked. Didn't Brilliant. Know that. Yeah. Uh, but like yeah, they I, I feel like they would go with what? How did that Hold work? on. I might be I might have that wrong. Yeah. I played a Blu-ray in a PS4 Pro, like Hold Not on, even a on. pro. Hold on, I might have that wrong. What is the stupid thing? Ultra HD. Sorry, that was the stupid thing that I that it didn't have. Xbox One S has mm. support for 4K Blu-ray. The PS4 Pro doesn't. I was like, wait a minute. No, no, the PS3 had Blu-ray. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. sorry, go ahead. I was pretty confused for a yep. second there. Yep. But uh, yeah, I think people use an existing device or they would rather go buy something that can do a bunch of other stuff and play Blu-rays instead of something that just plays Blu-rays. Speaking of other things dead, uh, Intel's Smart Glasses Group, gone. Uh, the glasses they were working on, called Vaunt, looked kind of like normal glasses and used a low-powered laser beam to beam images into the eye. So either Intel is giving up on AR for a while, or they figured they were never going to get laser beams into your eye past the regulatory bodies that pay attention to that sort of thing. Which I think, honestly, both of those options are totally valid. Because I think, uh, how is this not a much more major topic? Oh, well, we're talking about this. Okay. Uh, GeForce Partner Program is, um, well, we kind of talked about it a little bit last week, but it looks like it's official. Asus has announced the original article here is from Hot Hardware. You weren't here last week. Uh, week before? I don't know. 
Okay. Ares, Ares, Ares video cards. No, I, I read the article where it was rumored. And I talked about it on WAN Show at some point. Oh, okay. But okay. this is it, it's official. ROG is out for Asus's high-end gaming products that feature AMD processors. So this is Ares, which is a play on Asus's Ares with an S, not a Z, high-end like dual GPU AMD Radeon cards that were like a limited edition, uh, similar to their Mars ones for NVIDIA. Um, so just a summary for those of you who aren't familiar, the program rewards partners with perks, including marketing funds, special promotions, and extra engineering support. And Asus has not gone on the record saying it joined the program, but with the release of Ares, it is fairly clear that Republic of Gamers will only be used on GeForce cards and other products containing an NVIDIA uh, processor. Da, da, da. Intense. Have you seen this? I have no idea what this is. Uh, yeah, it's lame. It's okay. just stupid marketing junk. Um, so yeah, speaking of stupid marketing junk, um, that's it for the Wine Show. Yeah. The Marketing Junk Show. No. There's more to it than that. I ate jerky for half of this show. Yeah, I was going to say, we, we eat stuff. They don't pay extra for that, though. And drink some it's just, water. It's just yummy. Yeah. Cool. So we'll see you again next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Bye. I don't know what it is, but like I didn't even check the time. But it's been like exactly an hour. And it's just something about the WAN show that takes exactly an hour. <laughs> I think part of it, honestly, is James has written so many docs now. No, this was uh, John helped him this week. Oh. Yeah. Forgot Fault Plane. Dang it. Nope. We'll come back. We're, no, we're going back. Yeah. We're going back. Coming back. It's like a after party, but not after. It's like a post party, but not I'm post. Gonna, I'm going to say that we didn't, because we technically talked about it at the beginning of the show, but we didn't highlight the cool things that are on it, so we also did. Here we go. Oh, dang it. I would probably. Yep, just a sec. There we go. Hey, we're I'm, still here. I don't know you didn't password. stop and start, right? Like, we're just still going? Mm -hmm. Nice. My fingers are really mm, jerky, though. Oh. I'm not making it much better by licking them and then wiping them on my pants, but... Oh. Um, yeah. Yes, AJ, you completely saved the day. Good job. All right, let's see if I... Also, I noticed that you logged on to uh, Battlegrounds at uh, 2.58 local time. So we're going to need to talk on Monday. But thank you for saving the day. I appreciate it. <laughs> Okay then. Uh, screen sharing with Linus. Let's go ahead and put that there. So what do we have up there? Oh, this is a um, tech wiki. That is actually a very unusual looking thumbnail for a tech wiki video. Interesting. That's an unusual looking host for a tech wiki video. Actually, John's done a lot of the hosting on tech wiki lately, and uh, the reception's been really good. Let's go ahead and go back. See how that? See how snappy that site is? Isn't that beautiful? Hey. Here's our we're hiring video in case Colton gets fired. You can't really tell, but he's like cowering. It's great. I can, yeah. 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 It's pretty wonderful. Uh, this went up simultaneously because there was an embargo. Super, no one cared, hey, about Ryzen 2. Really? Yeah. It was like, it was not only not like a big momentum spike for the channel, but it was like devastating. Slow down? Oh, yeah. wow. It like crushed the channel. Huh. Um, this one is going to blow up on YouTube. Faster internet for free in 30 seconds, and it works. Do you know about Cloudflare's DNS? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, we basically yeah. just show people how to change their DNS to a faster one. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, 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 no, that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I might say snappier. Well, you know but, what? You know. You know what? Um, I won't. I won't destroy my principles, but I won't compromise my principles, but I might I might be flexible <laughs> sometimes. 
<laughs> Technically, you might be I correct. Don't, I don't think it's too brutal. I don't I think, think this is far off. Yeah, I think it's fine. Uh, Self-driving car levels explained. That's another fast as possible. That's, That's cool. It, it's really cool because a lot of people don't realize that there's, I think, six levels? Something like that? Six levels. Like level four is not actually the end. Yeah. Um, so that's really cool. The ThinkPad X1 Carbon review is up. Oh, I don't know. I don't know how much Intel's gonna like this video. Uh, Xeon W is basically Ooh, that's fun. Core i9 with ECC. And by the way, here's pay another seven hundred dollars, please. Um, but it's it's still worth watching the video. We go into it in more detail. This video ended up being like pretty brutal. I was thinking it was just gonna be me and Dennis kind of like racing to build a PC. Instead, it was Dennis trying to build a PC at all. <laughs> oh, jeez. This video is actually fantastic. Also, AJ, I know I'm, I'm just yanking your chain. We, uh, we really mixed things up a little bit. Oh, my. Um, so we, we kind of went. What the heck? Uh, so I'm baking, a, I'm baking a laptop cake. Tells. That's kind of the idea behind it. Oh, and these are all the things you want in a... You know, yeah. Okay. And so the point that we're making is that... You just, went really far with this. Just because you have the right ingredients doesn't mean that you actually make a delicious cake. Wow! You might get a couple things wrong, you know? Brutal. So we've got the magic transition there. Hmm. Isn't, that, isn't that beautiful? Alex actually went and had a custom cake made for this video, Dell XPS 2018. <gasps> And we're going to leave it there. <laughs> okay. I haven't seen that. I need to see that. <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, we've got the wearable keyboard and mouse. Yes. Yeah. So it's a, both a keyboard and a mouse, and it just fits on your hand like that. I think we're getting into already released. And I released. think that's, uh, I think, yeah, that's getting into the stuff that's already released now, I think. Yep. Oh, also Kyle's on the platform. Yeah. Whoopie, 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 whoop. So he's got, uh, that probably went up on the embargo. Oh, wow. Uh oh. Yeah. Okay. I. That's yeah. not fake. No, it's not. That's real coolant. That's, it is. That's a problem. Yep. I've um, seen that. So at some point we're gonna get this new button fixed so that you can tell the difference between stuff that's just everything is new. Everything is new. Flight Everything plane. ever uploaded is new. Everything is new. It's a new website. Um, but new it, thumbnail. But genuinely, there are some new things over on Floatplane. Go check new, them out. New comment. <laughs> Floatplane.com. Someone new viewed it recently. 